What is the riz that Sokka has, man? These girls be kissing him left, right, and center. We give birth for a living. We bleed monthly. You think I'm scared of a little snow in my face? <laughs> Hey guys, it's your girl Laisha, K Geek XX Chic, and we are back with another reaction to Avatar: The Last Airbender, the Netflix adaptation, and we're now on to episode seven, which is called The North. So the last episode was fantastic. We delved a little bit more into the characterization behind Zuko in particular, and also the idea behind what's motivating each of these characters, namely Zuko and Aang, in their motivations and why they're acting with the way that they are. And it was very touching. You know, we got to see the whole backstory of Zuko what led him to this point, why he acts the way that he does, and really what his uncle's been trying to get everybody else to see, despite his rough edges. <laughs> and on the Aang side of things, Aang was able to have a really good conversation with Avatar Roku, again, getting some more insight on the type of steps he's gonna have to take as he learns to be the Avatar that he wants to be, while also learning what he can from those who've been there in that place before. So we see that at the end, Aang did manage to get the item that Roku took from, from Ko and went back to the spirit realm and gave Ko back this, this relic. As a result, Ko was willing to trade back all the people that he had captured. And we see that Aang did go back to hopefully have another conversation with Gatso, but Gatso has moved on from this plane at long last. And even though it's sad for Aang, it's probably, you know, it's time. So anyway, that's how we ended the episode. Now it looks like we're gonna be back onto our quest to head up to the Northern Water Tribe. So I'm ready to jump in. But just before I do, a reminder that if you'd like to be notified of when I do uploads of this show or anything else you might be watching of mine, please hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. And please let me know what's going on in the comments below and show some love to this video, with some likes if you're feeling it. All right, that out of the way, guys, let's get into the episode right now. I was just on Admiral Zhao's ship going over the latest fuel usage figures. The Lieutenant Dang and I were burning the midnight oil. Mm -hmm. So you're drinking. Just say it. Are you certain? Yes, sir. I heard Dang order his men to shore to meet the guard. Tonight? That means he'll be here any minute. This is Zhao's doing. Mm. Somehow he's convinced Ozai you turned against him. I mean, would it take much convincing? Uncle, we can't let my father believe I've turned against him. I know, but first you must get Yeah, let's safe. not end up in Zhao's custody. It was all too easy to get him to take the bait. The one and only thing that your father was right about with these all these all these quests was the fact that it's made him a lot stronger. And that his son was a traitor. Get off that right now. In the water. Don't worry. Zuko. Zuko does not go down that easily. General Iroh. I'm sure he's been through a terrible shock. Oh, Zhao. I'm glad you're underestimating Zuko. If there's one thing that kid is also used to, it's being underestimated. Oh, poor boy. That's the downside, man. I'm saying I could never be royalty. The amount of politics that goes on, the backstabbing, the people constantly trying to get at you and your family. No thanks, I'll, I'll stick to being a peasant. <laughs> you should realize Zuko and I, we both have a lot on our shoulders. Exactly, commonalities. I haven't learned any of the other bending skills and I'll probably continue messing up. But at least I'll be able to do it with my friends by my side. Exactly, bright side. Looking good, love the mm. snow wall. Feeling cold though, already. Welcome to Agnikella. Mm. Papa's like, what about me? No one ever greets me. Yeah. Hasn't happened. I can't tell you the joy it brings us to welcome a long lost brother and sister from the South. This Thanks. is Master Paku. He is our senior waterbending master. Damn, he's severe looking. Princess Yue, our tribe's spiritual leader. Okay, There's listen, Sokka, didn't you have a girlfriend back on Kyoshi Island? <laughs> Several days ago, our scouts picked up a Fire Nation fleet steaming this way. We've been keeping track of them ever since. We are grateful. With the power of the Avatar on our side. Well, calm we'll down with that. <laughs> I'm not exactly it. all good on the whole Avatar state thing. Stop staring. Right? I swear I will not rest until I hunt down these villains. I was like, let me just play, play the part. I know who did this. Exactly. And he's in the room with us. It was Ozai. Hmm. Has given me 
the honor of leading a great armada with orders to conquer the north. Try. But you weren't the first to come to mind for such a prominent mission. <laughs> As in, you're insignificant. That also means that I have no track record of failure. I mean, he's not wrong about that. Unlike you. It's only a failure if you didn't mean for it to happen. My man left on purpose. Wow, you expect an earthbender slave to give it his all in a fight against you? Okay. The Fire Lord deems your performance below average. <laughs> but I defeated him. You should have finished him at least two moves earlier. Thus, you will undergo another trial tomorrow. Yes, he's trying to burn the humanity out of you. Mm, your wife's genes are strong, sir. Stronger than you want. I'll burn everyone in the world until he admits the truth. That I'm the one. See, what the problem is, is Azula, you should know that for yourself. It doesn't matter if your dad never recognizes it, but I know that's not easy. When you're young, you think your parents' approval is everything. I just want to say thanks for helping me get here. I wouldn't have missed it for the Gratefulness world. is a good trait. The worst part was like, I couldn't do anything about it. What's important is you survive. At this point, yeah. Go and find Yagoda. She is one of our finest instructors and she can start you on your journey. Nice. Um, Aang? Hello? Aang should be like, look, how about me? I need, I need lessons. Not her making ice cream. Now that is a handy ass trick. Having your own personal ice cream maker. So I'd hide out here with the grands and make dessert. Good compromise. You are just a girl. What else would she be? I wasn't a girl. Right? Because <laughs> I was stuck up? Yeah. I mean, no. I mean, yeah, that's what I thought. But you're Damn. Ordinary. <laughs> Not ordinary. Because that wouldn't be good. Stop talking. And I, th I think I should stop saying words now. Yep, there we go. There are times it would have been nice to not have to worry. Times I wish I could be a kid, just a boy. Mm -hmm. Ready for the evening blessing? Yeah, excuse me, madam. Fraternizing with the help. You want to ask me about fighting? You have something none of us have. Experience. Oh. Uh, no metal, leather, and uh, they don't have shoulder spikes anymore. The rest of the platoon should hear this. Would you mind coming to talk to them? Look at that, see? You have something to contribute. What do you think is the best approach to the coming battle? Might Running. You lead the offensive front. I don't do offense. I don't do offense. Our style is to evade and avoid conflict. At well, all you're costs. You're not just an airbender. You're the avatar. Barely. I haven't mastered any other bending. But that's why I came here. Hoping someone could teach me. But we were I'm 12. It would have been wise to have focused on your training during your journey. I mean, how long do you think I've been out? Can you help? Seeing if you won't be able to count the avatar. It just blows my mind that people just cannot see past the fact that he's the avatar to see that he is a 12 year old boy. A boy. Would you expect a 12 year old in your village to be able to take on a battle head on? I'd heard stories of water healing, but I didn't think it was still being practiced. Oh, yes. It's a vital part of our culture. Would you like to try it? I've been a bender for 15 minutes. Maybe not. Okay, good. They've got a dummy. <laughs> you must understand what it means to feel pain. I mean, is there a human on the planet that doesn't? Which reminds me, when do we get to fight training? Excuse Ooh. me. I think Slow down. I'm sorry, but women don't fight. Sorry? We use our skills to heal, not to harm. Pardon? Healing is a noble and sacred tradition. You're absolutely right, but I did not mention the fireballs at my head. In the Northern Water Tribe, women aren't allowed to fight. Women are in the aren't 20... Allowed? Yeah. That's not right. Welcome to misogyny. She's like, well, there's nothing for me to learn here. Yeah, you don't agree with that, do you, ma'am? So, Princess Yue. Hmm. Couldn't keep your mind off of her for 10 minutes, huh? We were betrothed. It was arranged by our parents when we were children, but when she turned 16, she broke it off. She said, I'm gonna make my own decisions. During his time as the Avatar, Kirk didn't engage much with the world. Some say he became enamored with the spirit world and spent most of his time there. I mean, do you blame him? It's peaceful there. People kind of suck. I believe there must be more to his story. Yeah, I'm sure he had his reasons. Hey, Kirk, you in there, buddy? You wanna talk? 
Oh, he's getting better at the meditation part. Damn, why couldn't we be somewhere tropical, bro? Even in the afterlife, you want to be cold? Hello, A. Those eyes. Hello. Whether the waterbenders survive, all of that is up to you. Just one kid. No, right? you are the avatar. <laughs> I can use that power to save the North. But to gain control over it, you need to first master the other disciplines. <laughs> Twelve. She could channel the power through my body. That is not his she way. I can tell already. But you still could. No one can! I think won't is the word you're looking for. The war I'd waged on the spirits damaged my body and corrupted my soul. I see. In my condition, I wouldn't be able to control the Avatar state any more than you could. If you should try, what's the worst that could happen? The spirit stole her face. Oh. Listen. Always. The Avatar must walk alone. Nope. Or else the ones you love will suffer. They'll suffer regardless because they love him. I guess you need to go and recombobulate. How do you know that word, sis? I knew it. It was you. <laughs> yes. You're the boss. Yes. But how? I'm a spiritual leader. Did you forget that part? You're spirit? Keep up, Sokka. Part spirit, mostly human. Being of both worlds has meant that I can be a bridge between the two. Like the Avatar. So you pop over there just for fun? What I mean, it's doing? part of her world, isn't it? Magical. Not quite the word I would use. I mean, that's because you interface with Ko. Your heart. That's what sets you apart. That's what makes you a warrior. Okay. She said, listen, I'm going to redefine it for you. Your dad don't know what he's talking about. Sorry, Suki, you've been knocked out as number one in his heart. But he is not the boy of my dreams. I like the play on words. Well done, sis. Oh, ma'am. What is the riz that Sokka has, man? These girls be kissing him left, right, and center. And he's doing nothing. It's how I made it this far. And with their help is how I'm going to make it through this battle. You tell him. We're team Avatar. Mm. There is no team There Avatar. is now. Being the Avatar means being the one who bears the burden. That's what it meant. Wow. So Kirk's kind of a dick. Women aren't allowed in combat. I thought you knew. I've been fighting firebenders ever since I left home. Can any of your men say that? That doesn't Ooh. matter. Why not? Because this isn't about them, it's about you. I'm not strong enough. Women aren't strong enough. Ooh, Katara, you better get out that water whip. And sure. I'm not going to let what happened to the Southern tribe happen here. Well, you think so, huh? I would have water whipped him right across the face. I can't lose you, Miss Locker. It's not your choice. These people need the Avatar. And I can't be the Avatar with you around. This is the first time you've put on a mask, gang. But I don't blame him. What else is he supposed to believe? He's had three Avatar, previous Avatars tell him his friends are his weakness. It's rough, but he's, they're so wrong. Who knows, they might've actually been more successful Avatars if they had had friends. But also what these Avatars are failing to recognize is that the world is different. When they were all Avatars, they were all, they were still maintaining a balance. The balance is lost. Avatars, or Aang's coming from a completely different place. Because I have something none of the others had. I have destiny on my side. Just not. This is destiny. Yeah, he wasn't speaking philosophically, sadly. The plan is to prove my father wasn't wrong to trust me with this mission. The plan is to go in and capture the Avatar once and for all. And then? The plan is to reclaim what's rightfully mine. Yes, he knows, but for now, though. So no plan. Exactly. I'm working on it. <laughs> He's like, I know you, sir. He's working with someone else. He is. Someone much smarter. <laughs> I love that. He's like, Zhao's a dummy, actually. I'm not the one playing games. This is your last chance. Fight or fail. No. Good for you. You dare. Stand up to him. Oh, she said I upped it to lightning. How about that? How about that? Happy now, Dad. 
you going to see that as weakness and burn her face? Because she didn't hit you with it or try to? Let me go into the world and show you what I can really do. I'm through playing games here. Gotta respect her standing up for herself regardless, though. Oh, sure. She gets a smile. No physical abuse? All right. I'm gonna challenge Paku to fight. I know. He's a master. I know he's probably gonna mop the floor with me, but it doesn't matter. Exactly. It's the point will be made. Oh Sokka, if you're trying to talk sense into me, you're not doing a very good job. <laughs> sense. Who's talking sense? He's like, I'm actually encouraging you. Go kick his ass. Here, listen. Not on the losing team here. Go sis. Team sis always. Go back to the healing huts with the other women. Make me. That, see, I told you she needs to whip his ass some time ago. And nay nay. Mm -mm. You want to learn how to fight? Yes, I do. Beautiful. So I got, oh, got both hands out though. No, you got to let her do the same. Don't, especially because you're a man. <laughs> oh, she said ice this time. Don't give up. Had enough? Not really. I probably would have if you didn't say that. Is that all you got? Exactly. We give birth for a living. We bleed monthly. You think I'm scared of a little snow in my face? <laughs> exactly. I was getting warmed up. Nice! Look at the reflexes! She said she's a fast learner. Yes, new moves. You never saw that before in the north in the south north. Yeah, that's it. I'm getting all excited, I can't even talk. Break it. Come on, break it, Katara. Still proud of her. She held her own on a against a master. You're an excellent waterbender. I know. But you still won't let me fight. No. Coward. No one's pushed Master Paco. That exactly. Incredible. Those ice discs. How did you do that? I learned that from Earthbenders. Well, I doubt anyone's gonna say you're not strong enough now. And now the women know what they can do. You've made your point. You say I lost. Did you? Exactly. You didn't. You proved your point. But it's my decision to fight. Exactly. Not Paco's and not yours. Yeah. And do you think we came all the way here just to leave you on your own? I don't know if I can protect you. You can't. It's the truth. The Avatar must bear the burden alone. This is the past. Exactly. The only one person can tell you the future. The person who will write the legend of Aang. That's right, right here. Your legend, your way. Time to fight. This little face is so determined. It's so cute. <laughs> Aww. All right, guys. Well, that was... A really good episode. Again, I like that they're reinforcing yet again that Aang has got to find his own way and figure out how to be his own version of the Avatar. It's only understandable that he's going to look to other Avatars of the past for guidance. This is part of the journey that other Avatars have had. And being as young as he is, he definitely needs the guidance of people who've not only done this before, but lived more life than he has. Despite his actual biological age, He's mentally only 12 years of experience in this in this world. So it's understandable that he's trying his best to honor what these people are telling him and wondering if maybe that is the only way to go forward. But it's important to note that with all the previous avatars, it's not that they're trying to sabotage Aang. They're just giving advice based on what they know and the experience that they had. That's all you can do. And that's why like, no matter who you are, if you're an older person who's trying to give advice to someone younger, all you can do is give what you can from your own perspective. All of us are unique and our lens and our experience in this world are unique as well. And there's nothing wrong with taking on information and taking on advice because not all advice is bad advice. Some of it's very helpful to keep us from falling into pitfalls that would be otherwise avoidable. But in the end, what Roshi, uh, Kyoshi, I should say, said, which is probably the most accurate thing, was that Aang has to figure this out for himself. This is a journey that only Aang can take because Aang is the only Aang. And so 
even though they're all telling him to do this alone, that was based on what they went through and again, what the world looked like when they were the Avatar. And as I was saying in the episode, the difference that all these avatars have that Aang doesn't is that all of them were born to our knowledge. I mean, I don't know what happened before the, I think the only ones, yeah, the, beyond the ones that were in the series, <laughs> I know that there's more lore, but beyond the avatars that were in the series, I'm not sure, but the ones we were exposed to, all of them were born into the cycle when the world was still in balance and for the most part at peace. That doesn't mean that there wasn't strife and there wasn't things for them to do, but there was overall a balance because there was always an active avatar keeping that balance. Aang was frozen for a hundred years. The world has shifted dramatically out of balance during that time. So they are not able to give Aang advice on how to fix this because they've never been in this position. They've been, if anything, maintaining what was already there. Aang has to literally figure out how to repair and how to rebuild because the Fire Nation has destroyed so much of the balance that was maintained by the avatars previous. So he's in a unique position and that's something unfortunately the new, the old avatars cannot give him advice on because they don't have the experience in that world. So that's really his big challenge and it's understandable that he's just kind of getting frustrated because as we heard from a couple uh, avatars ago, Aang wants it to be easy because that makes sense, right? Air flows effortlessly for the most part. Yeah, you might get a storm or two where that air gets really rough and violent, but for the most part, air just sits, it just flows. And that's very much the air nomads lifestyle and mentality, like they're chill and they let it flow. They're not about a lot of resistance. And so it's understandable that Aang wants this to be easy, but it's not easy. It's far from easy. And it's sad that, you know, the temple at the Air Nomad temple, sorry, the, sorry, the temple in the South was destroyed. So he wasn't able to commune with that particular Air Master. But I think that would be the best thing for him is to commune with another Air Nomad avatar who at least would understand more of where Aang is coming from. But anyways, point being, it's not gonna be easy. Aang's got a lot of work ahead of him and it's not an easy thing to, to fathom. And of course, his big thing is that his friends, he says friends, but we know that they really have become his family. And this is so important to him because again, like other, unlike other avatars, I should say, Aang lost everyone. There's not a family member left. There's not a single person who has his abilities or has his background left. He is singular in this world. Whereas the others that to our knowledge still had their communities around them, still probably had their family members, even if they weren't as close to them after becoming the avatar. So Aang, the family that he has created with these two, with Sokka and Katara, means so much more to him than it would to other avatars because he feels a loneliness that they really cannot, they really can't understand. Like, yes, the, the avatar made them lonely, but it's not the same sense of I'm completely alone as in community, as in background, as in culture. Literally being the last of your kind, none of them have that experience. So Aang just has such a unique journey in so many ways. And that's why, Thankfully, at the end, we heard Katara reinforce to him that, you know, these past avatars, th th that was the past. There's only so much you can learn from them. You need to dictate what your story is going to be because you're in a completely different situation and you have to decide what's going to be best for you to go forward. Aang has to reset the balance and rebuild all the damage that's happened over centuries of pain and suffering and warring and hatred and bitterness. Like there, it's not just a matter of stopping this war. There's the wounds that have been inflicted by the war, the wounds we've seen in Jet, the wound we, we, seen, we saw in Sai and his son, whose name slipped out of my head from last episode, from the last previous episodes, the wounds of even that village from the last episode where the Fire Nation came through and burnt up all of their forests and ruined their crops. Like there's been so much scar tissue and wounds and pain that have been inflicted because of this war. And that's not gonna go away just because the war ends. And so that's the other thing that you need someone who is more of a mediator and someone who's more connective to help rebuild these bridges to create that harmony in the world again. And that's not something you could do alone. Because all Aang has experience with, for the most part, is what it's like to be an air nomad. You need someone, maybe from a water tribe, who understands how the water tribe people think. You're going to need someone from the earth bending side that can talk to and communicate with the earthbenders. You're going to need someone from the Fire Nation who's going to be empathetic enough to understand that why these people in other nations are going to have some beef. Like, there's going to be a lot required and it's being isolated is not going to get it done. So that's something that Aang's going to slowly learn, but... 
Again, I like that at the end, Katara just reminded him that the decision to stand by Aang is not his alone. It's theirs, right? They're they, both her, her and Sokka have their own minds, their own opinions. They understand the level of danger. They've chosen to come with him all this way. And it's because they want to be there to protect him. And like she said, you can't protect us, not from everything, not forever. So the more you rely on us to help you, the better it is for everyone. And then the other thing too, which I brought up in the episode was that, you know, uh, Avatar Karuk was saying, oh, if you really want to protect them, you know, if you really care about them, the best thing you can do is cut them off. But he's speaking like they don't have their own feelings, right? Like didn't, it just doesn't occur to him that the people that were hurting or would hurt from Aang cutting himself off. Katara and Sokka love him now. He's like a brother. Well, <laughs> for Sokka anyways, he's like a brother. He's family. Let's put it that way. He's family. So being cut off from him would hurt them more than anything right now. Outside of that, we had Katara. She's so excited to finally be in the North, both her and Sokka, honestly. It's great for them to see people who share a similar background to them, a similar history. Even though they have quite a bit in the South, we can see even looking at the way they depicted it in the show, the huge scale difference. I mean, the North is massive. The South is basically a village in comparison. But again, a lot of that has to do with the past and with what happened with the Fire Nation. But either way, them getting to see some of these older practices and particularly for Katara to see these waterbending practices that she's been held off from and, and kept away from is really, really good for her. But we see that it wasn't all sunshine and roses. On top of all the old traditions they've held on to, they've also held on to the misogyny. <laughs> and it's understandable that Katara's like, WTF, what do you mean? Like you have women who are waterbenders here why would you not employ everybody who's got the ability to fight to fight? And we have, uh, I cannot remember the name of the master, but he is very much, he's old, first of all, he's ancient. So he's set in his ways and he doesn't want to hear anything new. He thinks that there's just no place for a woman on the battlefield. In his mind, he thinks that's how you protect the society. And again, it's understandable. And I mean, in some, in its intent, I guess you could say it's norm, it's noble. I mean, it's nice that he wants to protect and that the men feel like they should protect the women and children. It's more the dismissing of the fact that waterbenders, female waterbenders are just as capable as the men. And we heard that really where he fell off is when he said to, oh, you guys are too weak. Women are too weak to do that. And I'm like, sir, that argument always bothers me when I hear men say that women are weak. Like, yes, in general, most of us have physiques and builds that aren't necessarily as large or as muscular as men. And as a result, men are physically potentially a bit stronger than we are. You're gonna sit there and say oh, that a woman, as I said in the episode, who bleeds monthly and still has to go to work, take care of kids, take care of her husband, get things done. A woman who can bring life into this world, literally risks her life every time she does it, pushes a child out of her hoo-ha and survives that stuff. You think that women who can do all that are weak? You, you tap a man on his nuts and he crumples to the ground like paper and we're the weak ones. Okay. But anyways, that's where we lost it. And Katara understandably was like, this is ridiculous. Like this man is not even thinking. And so I love the challenge that she gives to him again, knowing that she'll lose, but it's more about showing him that she's able to hold her own. She's not just here to pretend or play at battle. And we see that even though she didn't win, because of course she does not have the experience that he does, she showed him that she had the strength and she had the adaptability that he clearly did not expect from her. And as they said, I love how the people around me are like, no one's gotten him. It's all worked up like that in a long time. <laughs> like, and you could see it, he was flustered. He was not ready and partly because he underestimated her, but also because she's damn good. And so anyway, I thought that was great. And it was a great, uh, great motivation for Aang to see Katara fight for what she wants and to push through expectations and do what she knows is right. Cause that's what he's been wanting to do, but just hasn't known the right way to do it. Not much to say about Sokka and, and Yue. I, I mean, their story, even in the animated version to me, was very much like a side side plot, but it's nice how they brought back how she was in the spirit world with him. And now that she's, he's seeing her in person and her having to pretend that she had no idea what he was talking about. And we got her backstory, which was great. And we see that they moved very quickly. My gosh, as I said, Sokka doesn't even have the taste of Suki out of his mouth yet, but anyway. <laughs> It is what it is, right? Life moves fast, moves fast in this world. So there was that. And then we saw on the Zuko side of things that he ended up uh, getting off the ship because of some false information planted by Zhao. Thankfully, he's got quick reflexes and he was not taken out, which is what Zhao tried to do. 
Zhao is despicable, but we been knew that. Well, I did knew that. But now as viewers, we know that Zhao is really not the man and he needs to be dealt with. And we see that Zhao is now been given the command to go ahead and do the attack on the Northern Temple and that he has a plan that he says he won't talk about it, but he's got a plan for why he thinks he's gonna be successful. And then finally, we had Azula. Again, not too much, but way more than we've had with her in the other series. But yes, her father is putting her through all these tests. He's using these different benders from his prisons to test her abilities, but it's 100% clear that she is outmatching them. Azula's tired of it. She's like, you keep giving me these tests that are meaningless. Why are we doing this? And her dad is basically like, oh, well, you know, I'm not satisfied yet. And so she finally decides to stand up to her dad a little bit here. We see that he does another trial for her and we see Azula says that she wants him to admit that she is the best of their, his children, that he is, she's the one who should be the heir. Because ever since this whole thing with Zuko came up, now all of a sudden she's at least, I don't know how much of it is really also Ozai, but in her mind, she's like, ever since Zuko did this thing, I've just become an afterthought and I'm not gonna let that happen. And so anyways, after her father tries to ch get her to challenge again, she's like, no, I'm not doing it anymore. And her dad, of course, gets upset with her insolence. And instead of fighting him, she shows that she's that, sorry, that she's mastered lightning, which is like the next step up of firebending. And she, you know, she gets it going and then she sends off a little shot, misses her dad. And I'm like, interesting that she's able to do that but if Zuko had done it he would have said he would she, she would have said that Zuko was weak for not trying to hit him with it but anyway we see that it's enough Ozai smirks and she says that yes I want to be put out in the world let me prove myself in the real world if that's what you need and again it's her mind of I got to compete against Zuko Zuko's been out there proving himself I'm within the confines of the castle let me put let me put myself out on the same playing field as my brother so that I can prove that I am that I'm better that I'm the one so it looks like that's exactly what she's going to get. But like I said, even though I don't like Azula, I respect it. And I say, I actually respect her a lot more in this series than I did in the animated one. So I see where she's coming from. And I think it's right for her to do this, to say, okay, if this is what you think you need to see, dad, then put me out there and let me show that I can also handle it in the real world and not just my brother. Yeah, another good episode. I enjoyed it a lot. Can't believe we only have one left, but I think it's been a good journey so far. And I hope you guys have been enjoying watching along with me. If you did, please show some love to this video and I will see you in the next one.